We're back with another batch of four bikes to put through their paces. Welcome to Cycling Weekly's 3K Gravel Group Test. So today we have the Tifosi Cavazzo e-car. Canyon's Grizzle, the BMC URS, and the Ronda route to test. So Stefan, you've pulled together this group test. You've chosen these four bikes. What was the reason behind choosing these of the myriad options on the market? Well, firstly, all the bikes come under £3,000, which gives the brands quite a lot of scope for some interesting choices, whether they're choosing to invest the money in the frame, making that as high quality as possible, or whether they're choosing to invest uh, the money more in terms of the spec. Yeah, there's a lot of variety that you do get at this price point, so it's interesting to see the differences between the bikes that we've got in test. And, and where on the kind of scale of burly to more road-like, where did you pitch these bikes? So the spectrum of gravel bikes has become quite broad. You have some bikes which are better suited for tamer trails and uh, mainly road miles. And on the other end, you have almost monster cross bikes, which are essentially mountain bikes with drop handlebars attached. We've decided to keep this group test around bikes which are a little bit more capable than perhaps uh, some of the gravel bikes that originally entered onto the scene, but still versatile enough to handle a good number of our road miles. Of course, tires are quite an investment of themselves. And so we have tested all the bikes, both with the control tire and also with the tire they come spec with. So those will of course be taken into account as part of our assessment. So without further ado, onto the first bike. This is the Ronda Route CF2. Uh, it comes in at 2799, weighing 10.66. Kg. Now, although it has taken the lowest rating at 3.5 out of 5, Stefan, you did still choose it for what I imagine is your longest gravel ride of the year. So it's got to have something going for it. It's definitely by no means a bad bike at all. It, yeah, I did choose it to do the um, South Downs double. So that's uh, doing 200 miles along the South Downs way and doing it in both directions within 24 hours. And there are a couple of reasons um, why I chose um, the Rondo route. And the main one has got to be the gearing. Uh, the gearing on this uh, with a um, Shimano GRX uh, 2x10. It's significantly lower than any of the other bikes in the group test, and it's actually one of the um, lowest um, gearing that you can get on uh, group sets that are commercially available and you're not doing any modifications yourself. The other factor is that the clearance um, is uh, pretty huge on this bike. It's um, the largest out of all of them. It's rated for 650B wheels up to uh, 57 millimeters. And so that equates to a 2.2 inch uh, mountain bike tire. And yeah, for the South Downs way, it's very bumpy. Yeah, you want to sort of minimize fatigue. And so being able to squeeze in the largest tires was uh, yeah, uh, very much uh, high on the uh, priority list. And it's got a bit of a party trick at the fork, hasn't it? So the fork is um, yeah, quite interesting on the um, Rondo Route CF2. It's um, what the brand has kind of like made a little bit of a name uh, for itself with. It's got the twin tip fork. And the way that it works is that you've got a chip here at the axle and depending on which way that's turned, you can either have the bike in the high position or the low position. And when it's in the high position, you've got a steeper head angle and the stack is a little bit lower and the reach is a little bit longer. And if you flip it round, then it goes into the low position and then the head angle gets slackened out to 71.5 degrees and the reach is increased by eight millimeters and the stack is increased by five millimeters. And so uh, the reach and stack, um, yeah, uh, being a bit shorter, a bit higher, makes it a little bit more more comfortable uh, for your riding position and the head angle being that little bit slacker it makes the handling a little bit more composed. It is nice to be able to change uh, between the two and uh, nice to have that option there but it's not uh, a complete game changer for me. So we've got some kind of kinky frame angles here. So yeah the top tube uh, comes pretty straight from the top of the head tube and then kinks down as it meets the seat post and uh, this design rather than being just a straight line it opens up a bit more space in the main frame. You can fit a bit of a larger half frame bag there maybe carry a tent in the yeah, main body of a bike. And with the seat tubes meeting the seat post a little bit further down, it just allows the um, seat post to flex that a little bit more, um, increasing the comfort yeah, a little bit. Something you might actually want because this is an alloy seat post, isn't it? Well, we have got carbon in some of the other bikes. Yeah, exactly. Some of the bikes do have carbon seat posts. Um, some of the bikes do have a uh, built suspension into their seat posts. And so yeah, this design um, helps a little bit. It's not quite as significant as uh, having an actual um, suspension seat post, but every little helps to tune out some of the bumps. Around the um, chains, so you can see that the um, drive side is uh, quite significantly dropped 
And this is to um, allow wider tires to be yeah, fitted into the uh, rear uh, without having to lengthen the chainstays too much. And so the chainstays on uh, this are really, really quite narrow for a gravel bike. They're 420 millimeters. And even then you can fit in tires that go up to uh, 650B times uh, 2.2 inches. So 57 millimeters. So some really quite chunky tires uh, you can fit into the back. And yeah, that's thanks to the shape of the chainstay. So, I mean, how did all of that come together in terms of the ride quality, those shorter chainstays, did they feel a bit, just a bit more nippy. Uh, with gravel bikes, uh, the majority of them come with 435 millimeter chainstays, and I find that these, uh, when you're on the tighter trails, sort of with chattery routes, uh, I find that the rear axle can feel like it's um, being hooked up a little bit, and um, it's just a little bit far back and a little bit disengaged from the ride. And so, with the chainstays on uh, the Rondo being quite so tight, it really did feel a lot better for those uh, like tight single track, um, the kind of trails that you might take a mountain bike on, but would essentially like sanitize the trail a little bit you know those uh, fun little routes through the uh, through the woods yeah whole bundle of fun so we said lots of really good things about this bike there was plenty to like but it is also the lowest performer uh what was the primary driver behind that well, the main factor I'm um, holding this bike back has got to be the group set. It's got the Shimano GRX 400 series, which is Tiago equivalent, and it's the, it's the lowest in the GRX range. And at this price point, um, we don't really expect to see um, this group set being spec'd so much. Uh, with the Canyon, we've got the GRX 800 series, which is Altegra equivalent. And on the Tofosi, we've got Campagnolo E-Car 1x13, which is a very, very um, high-end group set. So the 2x10 GRX here kind of stands out a little bit as uh, just being not so good value for money. Mm -hmm. And also we have got a color match wheel set, which to me usually means, well, it, it looks nice, but it means it's going to be in-house and might not be the best option. Exactly. So we've got uh, Rondo's own wheels here. And to be fair, they've got an internal rim width of uh, 23 millimeters. So like they plump out the tires quite nicely. They're quite modern in that respect, but they just feel a little bit heavy and a little bit sluggish compared to some of the other wheel sets that we have on test here. Okay, cool. So not a bad choice, but there are better choices out there. We'll have a look at the better choices now. So next up, we have Canyon's Grizzle. It's quite new to their lineup. It comes in at £2,949 and weighs 9.77 kg. Obviously, they introduced it to their line. They've also got the in-flight cross bike and the Grail gravel bike too. So where does this bike sit? So Canyon are seeing gravel as more of a spectrum with the Grail gravel bike being suited for tamer trails and uh, more and spending more time on the roads, whereas the Grizzle is going at the other end of that and is uh, better suited for trails which are bordering on those that you might take a mountain bike on and for long distance uh, bikepacking trips. So is that mostly about tyre clearance? Uh, yeah, with the uh, Grizzle, it's um, optimized for tires a fair bit larger than you might see typically on a gravel bike. And so it comes with 700 by 45 millimeter tires and can take up to 700 times 50. And because of this, can you say that it's not compatible with 650B wheels because they're just that much smaller, even in 2.1 inches, that's only 53 millimeters. And yeah, it would just throw off the handling. And likewise, if you wanted to try putting a 35 millimeter set of 700C tires on, that would likewise throw off the handling. Handling. It's yeah, just designed for those bigger, plumper tyres with a larger diameter. And then in terms of cushioning, you've also got Canyon suspension seat post. Uh, yeah, this is a brilliant piece of kit. Um, yeah, I really like it. It does take that um, little bit of edge off the bumps and it doesn't add that much weight and it's not so obtrusive. It's not like those uh, larger suspension seat posts um, that you get, which are quite heavy. It's yeah, quite slim line and did the job. So on the group set, we have, as we stated with the uh, with the Ronda, we had the GRX 400. Here we have GRX 800 and that's quite a big step up. Uh, definitely. With um, Canyon being a direct sales brand, it's known for having quite good value. And that's uh, clearly present here. It's got a uh, Bajurex 800 series, which is Altegra equivalent. And the shifts are uh, yeah, just so nice and crisp. It's got a very different design to the derailleur of a Rondo. It manages to keep the chain under control that bit better. And with the chainstay, you've even got um, a little bit of a protection there as well, which um, yeah, just reduces uh, the chain slap and uh, gets rid of the noise, but also, uh, more importantly, protects your frame a little bit as well. So we have got a higher end group set than we had on the Ronda, but you don't have quite the same range, right? 
Uh, no, exactly. And so at the front, you've got a 40 tooth chain ring and out back, you've got an 11 to 42 tooth 11 speaker set. And so this is the lowest gearing option you get with um, Shimano's 1x11 GRX group set, but it is really a little bit high for a gravel bike that's been taken on like a multi-day trip or any long ride where you're loading it up with bike packing bags. You do want to have something that just that little bit lower so you can winch yourself up those climbs. And we've also got DT Swiss wheels, which again, quite an upgrade. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like the DT Swiss Swiss wheels have a, have a 24 millimeter internal rim width, which pairs really, really nicely with the um, Schwab tires that we have here, the G1 bytes. You don't get the ratchet free hub system that you see on DT Swiss's higher end group set. So it's a standard pool system in there, but uh, they're really, really reliable. Like they're relatively lightweight. And they've got the straight pull spokes with aero blading, nice and strong, uh, lightweight, and uh, they're just a really solid set of wheels. And you've got a much more traditional handlebar and the Grail is well known for the hover kind of double decker. Uh, here you've got something nice and simple. What was the reason behind that? Uh, well, Canyon um, do you want to say that they're standing strongly behind the um, hover handlebar. They're yeah, not putting them out to bed just yet. They have steered back a little bit um, from that. They've gone with a more traditional shape, thinking that uh, for long distance um, bikepacking trips, um, people might want to um, have an aero handlebar. It's easier to attach the um, aero bars onto a round um, handlebar. And with just having a standard stem rather than the one piece um, unit, uh, you can swap in your own handlebars just that little bit easier. In this case, we've got the rigid fork, but the head tube is rated for a suspension fork and there are those options available, right? That's right, it is able to take the RockShox Rudy suspension fork, which was recently released. And so it's interesting to see that, uh, can you think that this is the direction in which uh, gravel seems to be going? Okay, so you've got this burly tire clearance, you've got your suspension seat post, capability for a suspension fork. Does the geometry match up with that? Yeah, so unfortunately, I feel like this is an area which lets the bike down a little bit. It's got quite a steep head angle at 72.25 degrees, and the chain stays are quite long at uh, 435 millimeters. And although that's quite a standard length for a gravel bike, for taking it on those uh, single track trails with the roots and the twists and the turns, it just feels like a little bit um, disconnected. You feel like you're getting hooked up on those roots a little bit, um, with the rear axle just being like so far out behind you. And so for a bike that's um, being taken onto this kind of terrain and it's going to be like primarily ridden on this kind of terrain, I'd be looking for something which does have a tighter rear end, maybe going down to uh, 425 millimeters at least uh, for the chainstay length. The geometry seems to be a little bit at odds with the components that aspect on it. On the other hand, with the mounts, with the um, triple mounts on the fork and the one under the down tube, it's yeah, really, really good for like loading up and like, it's a nice stable platform for taking on a bike packing trip. Uh, you feel really confident, it's nice and planted. And so for that kind of riding, um, I think that the geometry is well suited, but for more trail riding, taking it into the woods, it is held back a little bit. So the Canyon Grizzle got four out of five. Pretty good, but not quite perfect. And it actually does tie with our next bike from Tifosi. So moving on to that one. Next up and tied with the Canyon Grizzle is the Tifosi Cavazzo E-Car. It comes in at 2,999 pounds and weighs 9.5 kilograms. So tell us what is the most exciting element of this bike? It's got Campagnolo's e-car gravel group set. It's one by 13 and it really is the yeah, main selling point of this bike. I've got to say it's one by, so you've got that shifting simplicity. You don't have the yeah, front chain rings uh, to shift between, but then it goes from nine to 42 teeth for this cassette. And so you've got this range, which is huge. It's um, almost equivalent to having a two by group set in terms of the absolute range. But even then you've got five single tooth jumps. And so when you're going on the road, going quite fast, it's it feels much more like you're on an endurance road bike with the gear shifts. You're able to ride at the cadence that you want uh, rather than having to like, shift between being too hard and uh, too easy. Uh, none of the other bikes in the group test uh, have a single single tooth jump in their cassette. And so this yeah, is really uh, quite quite a step up in uh, those terms. Mm. And, and this bike costs one pound under 3,000 pounds. How much would I be expecting to pay at other brand houses if I wanted Campag e-car? 
Yeah, so to put things in perspective, Canyon Grizzle is also available with the eCar group set and that comes in at £5,000, so £2,000 more expensive. To be fair, that bike has carbon wheels, so it's not only the group set um, which differs between those two bikes, but that gives you an idea of uh, the kind of price point that you generally see uh, the eCar group set at. So, so far, all the bikes that we've had and we've looked at have had 160 rotors front and rear, whereas here you've got a 140. Did you notice that made a difference? It's noticeable having the um, smaller rotor on the back, but um, I don't think that it really caused too much of a problem in the braking feel. Um, with the smaller rotor, it's like a little bit less grabby than with a 160mm rotor, and so it's actually a little bit easier to control the rear wheel and not like lock up the tyre uh, when you're squeezing on the brakes. But um, on the other hand, with the smaller rotor size, um, it's going to be a little bit tougher on the components. There's going to be a greater heat buildup. You've got a smaller braking surface. And so you're going to be weighing through that rotor a little bit faster. And so on my, on my own bike, um, I'd want to set up with a 160 millimeter rotor uh, just for the sort of longevity of the components. But uh, performance wise, I'd say that 140 was yeah, totally fine and uh, potentially even uh, a little bit um, yeah, superior to the 160 millimeter rotors because uh, it's just that a little bit easier to not lock up the rear wheel. So as per all the other bikes in this test, we've got alloy wheels. Tell me a bit about those and the tires that they're paired with. And so we've got the Michi Graf uh, alloy wheels on this bike. And in terms of uh, their sort of like responsiveness, um, they're, yeah, they're pretty zippy, um, pretty fast to accelerate, but the internal rim width is 19 millimeters. And so that's really quite narrow by gravel standards, even by road standards these days. If you were going to upgrade the wheels down the line, it would be nicer to go for something that's a little bit wider with internal rim width, because that would just complement a wider tire a little bit better. It will give more support for the side walls. And that almost lends itself. You've got this, this more road going gear um, and you've also got this much narrower internal rim width. I mean, would it lend itself to a bike you could use as a winter road bike as well as a gravel bike? Yeah, well, I think that's a really good thing about the um, Tifosi. Like um, the Rondo, it's um, compatible with 650B wheels. It goes up to 2.1 rather than 2.2 inches. Um, but yeah, going between 700C, having like a, um, a 32, 35 millimeter tire in mud guards, and then uh, in the summer, uh, when the trails are hard and it's yeah, nicer to ride off road, then you can put in a 650B wheel set um, with some 2.1 inch tires, a uh, similar diameter, and the handling would stay about the same. And yeah, and swapping between them is yeah, a real possibility. And I think would really complement the group set that spec uh, on the bike. So how does the geometry of this bike compare to the others on test? So with the chain stays, they're 435 millimeters, which is uh, the same as the Grizzle and is quite typical for a gravel bike, but um, long compared to the bikes that we have on this test. And it did result in the bike having the similar feel of getting hooked up on the roots um, going down the technical trails. The head angle is a little bit slacker than the Grizzle. It's at 71.5 and that yeah, did help and to a feeling of stability. And I think that it uh, paired almost quite well with the chainstay length. So when you've got the bike loaded up, it does really feel quite planted and stable, but it's just not nippy for taking it down the single track. Um, and, and you've got quite a lot of mounts as well. Is that really up to your carrying capability? Uh, yeah, exactly. So it's got the um, standard mounts that you'd expect to see on a gravel bike. It's got the underside of a down tube mounts and it's got the top tube mounts. But you've also got mounts which you don't tend to see so much on gravel bikes these days, uh, specifically ones for a rack and a set of panniers. And it's yeah, really quite impressive. Um, it's a carbon frame, carbon fork, but on the rear you can take 25 kilos and on the front you can take 15. And so this isn't quite on the level as what you'd get from a dedicated steel touring bike, but it's just a bit of extra versatility, um, which uh, some gravel bikes uh, yeah, just don't have. As an overall package, sounds like you can, you can really use it as a, almost like a winter road bike, excellent as a gravel bike, use it as a tourer. There's an awful lot going for it. And it's got this e-car group set. The Grizzle and this, they are technically tied, but if I were to ask you to really split hairs, and if this were your own money, where would you invest it? Yeah, so the Grizzle, it's quite a thoroughbred bike. It's designed for one purpose and it does that one purpose really quite well. It's, you know, that burly 700C large tire uh, gravel bike. The Tifosi, it's yeah, a bit more of a jack of all trades. It does all of these different things, touring, it can do winter road, gravel certainly. So if I was to choose, I'd go for the Tifosi Cavazzo. It's just that much more versatile and it just uh, opens up so many more doors than the Canyon Grizzle. But then again, if you do have room for a whole fleet of bikes and you want something that is designed for one purpose and it does that one purpose very, very well, then the Canyon Grizzle could be the better choice for you. Uh, but for me personally, I'd go for the uh, Mongol, that is the Tifosi Cavazzo.
So finally, we have arrived at our group test winner. Now, this is the BMC URS1. It comes in at 2,850 pounds and weighs 9.58 kg. So what made this bike the winningest of the bunch? So I think it's got to come down to the geometry and the frame design. It's got the slackest head angle out of any of the bikes that we've got on test at 70 degrees. And it's also got um, relatively short chainstays at 425 millimeters. And this combination means that uh, for you know, riding on more technical trails, uh, you've got that uh, sort of confidence and stability from the front with the uh, great out fork. But then at the back, it's, it's just a bit snappier. You can really get around the corners and the axle just feels like that little bit more like tucked underneath you and it's a lot more exciting to ride uh, than uh, some of the um, other gravel bikes. And back at the rear end we have an elastomer suspension. Did you really find that made much difference? To be honest it didn't give uh, quite as much of a cushioning effect as the seat post from Canyon. That was a really really nice design and you really do feel that. It doesn't detract from the bike, the rear end doesn't feel spongy at all and it does uh, mute um, the sort of uh, largest hits a little bit but uh, it doesn't blow you away and it doesn't uh, turn the ride into a magic carpet compared to other gravel bikes. And all the other bikes have had a 160 rotor on the front but we've got a dinner plate here right? Uh, I don't think that it's completely necessary for a gravel bike on a enduro mountain bike or something you've got um, tires that might be near uh, 2.4 inches and with a larger rotor um, you can really take advantage of that extra braking power because you've got the wider tires but here the clearance goes up to 45 millimeters in 700c and 47 millimeters in 650b and so you can't really take advantage of the full extent of the power on tap with the 180 millimeter rotor. And we've got another set of DT Swiss wheels once again, but these are very slightly different, right? For some reason, the um, cyclocross line of DT Swiss um, wheels is specced here. And so the internal rim width is a little bit narrower at 22 millimeters compared to 24 with the gravel specific line. And it yeah, doesn't detract too much from the wheels. Um, that difference in two millimeters isn't so great. And yeah, 22 millimeters is still fairly wide. If you are buying the wheels yourself, um, obviously you go for the, uh, the gravel ones and yeah, completely maximize the internal rim width, but uh, there wouldn't be a need to upgrade these wheels uh, from the off. They've got the um, same hub internals as those on the Canyon and they're just a very yeah, solid set of wheels. And they're wearing WTB's Radler tires in 40 millimeters. How did you get on with those? So the 40 millimeter size, I think, is a little bit on the uh, narrow side. I prefer to have a bit more cushion uh, for going over the roots and the rocks. And um, especially on the South Downs Way, you get some pretty large flints uh, going along the world way there. But in terms of the tread pattern, uh, it's quite good. It's um, quite um, a, almost a file tread down the center and um, the shoulder knobs are pretty aggressive. And so, yeah, the tread pattern is quite good. I just wish that um, they uh, made the most of the clearance that is on offer in maxing it out with uh, 45 millimeters. Um, and we have got a SRAM Apex group set. Uh, now compared to some of the other models, it's, it's not the highest end, is it? But I mean, it sounds like you found it perfectly capable. To be honest, I think that it's, uh, it's really quite a nice uh, group set. The shifting with the double tap lever, it's really nice and intuitive. You're not at risk of um, pulling on the brakes when you're shifting at all. And the clutch on the rear mech, it does keep things nicely under control. It's got a 40 tooth chain ring and it's um, paired with an 11 to 42 tooth cassette, which I think is uh, a little bit of a shame, uh, to be honest. And SRAM does produce a 10 to 42 tooth cassette. It means that you could put a 38 tooth chain ring on the front and still end up with a larger top gear than you have with 40 teeth, with 11 teeth as you do with um, this setup. And, but then you're also getting the slightly lower gear. And so it will add to the cost a little bit going for that 10 to 42 teeth uh, cassette. But I think that it would really open up this bike a little bit more, giving more range on both ends when paired with a 38 tooth chain ring. In terms of carrying capacity, how much ability have you got here if you want to load it up? So it's got uh, mounts underneath the down tube and on the top tube. And so there is some uh, capacity for carrying uh, an extra load on the bike, but it's not quite as expansive as some of the other bikes that we've got on the group test. It doesn't have mounts for panniers and it doesn't have the triple mounts on the fork um, for an anything cage. And so it is a little bit more limited in terms of uh, what you can uh, bolt onto the bike, but um, yeah, you can strap on handlebar bag, saddlebag, and fit in a smallish frame bag in the frame. So yeah, there's still potential for carrying some things, but it's not quite as expensive as some of the other bikes on the test. As we've said, this bike takes an awful lot of its cues from mountain bike geometry. And as a result, it has won our group test. So what does that tell you about where gravel bikes maybe are going and, and in which direction they're traveling? 
I think the really nice thing about um, this BMC is that it does have those elements from mountain bikes, but it doesn't go too far with them. And so it's still quite an efficient bike. You can still ride it for a good length. You can take it on a multi-day trip. You could yeah, ride the South Downs way on it. So it's not a quite a monster cross bike. And um, those um, bikes that yeah, you're starting to see, which are essentially mountain bikes with drop handlebars um, that are yeah, quite sluggish and best suited um, for sticking um, to the trails rather than anything uh, long distance. And I think that's uh, the really nice thing about of gravel riding that you've got both those ends of the spectrum you can take it um, on the trails and you can take it long distance it really opens things up a little bit and so i think that is really the best point about um, uh, the bmc urs that it's capable for the trails but you can take it long distance it yeah, does both really quite well so that is a pretty conclusive win for the bmc urs I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please do hit the like button and subscribe to see more of our videos. Would you have chosen the BMC as your winner or would you have selected one of the others? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you next time.